doesn't say you don't see your need for Savior. It doesn't say you don't believe Jesus died on the cross. It just says if you don't love, 1 John 4, 8, it's there. You can check it. If you don't love, you don't know him. See, the goal isn't going to heaven. This is eternal life, that you might know him. Because if I know him, who he is becomes my reality and my expression. And now I'm restored back to his image, the way he made man for God, so made for God, uh, so loved the world he gave his son, right? So what he loves is what he created. What he loves is what he made us to be. God said, let us make man in our image. So God created man in his image, in his own likeness. He created him both male and female, ladies, in his image. What's your creative value, girls? His image. You're not less than a man. You have the same created value. The same destiny to be like him. You're not lacking anything. You're amazing. Yeah? You're not subservient to us. The word submit to your husband doesn't mean be a slave to him. It means yield and adapt yourself to him as you would to the Lord. It means make peace and don't get disgruntled and frustrated and nitpicky and bossy. <laughs> because that reveals self-will, self-centeredness. And then when you say, I love you, all you're really doing is saying, I need you. Don't do me wrong. See, because love takes no account of the wrong done to it. So why are we so busted up by each other? Probably because we don't understand love. Probably when I say I love you, it's really I need you. I love you. Do you love me? That's not the gospel, church. That's the fall of man. It's caused a lot of pain in the body of Christ, and it's hindered our expression of him. So the world's not impressed with who he is because they can't see him in us. Because we look like them, we just have a different belief in him. <laughs> Not being mean, guys. I'm smiling the whole time. <laughs> Come on. You can't get mad at me. I'm too nice to you today. But can't we just have a family talk? Can't we just be in the living room? You don't have to fit this description. I'm not saying it's you. I'm saying don't ever let it be you. Guard your heart, because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Do you know how easy it is to get a hard heart? Do you know how easy it is to think in rightness and be so right that your heart's hard? So right that you're angry. Just get caught up with politics for 20 minutes, disagree with somebody, and now you're bitter because of a presidential race. And all of a sudden, your life is up for grabs. You're not established in anything, man. You're blowing like the wind and you're a product of the moment. But you believe in him and you're there on Sunday. <laughs> Come on, you can handle this. This isn't hard. This is life-giving. You young people, you may not relate to this because I'm 54, but I tell you what, when I was 18, I wish I saw what I see now. I would have a different heritage legacy. I'd have a way bigger thing following me called legacy. I wouldn't have spent time on nothing. I wouldn't have spent time being right and frustrated and mad at my wife and hurting her for 13 years because she wasn't what I thought she'd be, never considering what I was, never even considering what I was lacking, what I wasn't. It's so easy to look to somebody else and blame your life on something. There isn't a factor in my life that can stop what you see burning in my heart. My own wife can't break my heart. I didn't wake up for her to love me. I woke up to love. I didn't wake up to need her. I woke up to be like Jesus in her life. And I don't care how tried her day is, it'll bring the best out in me. Yay. So we're just going to have an okay day and ain't nothing nobody can do about it.
<laughs> you say, brother, I don't believe you can live that way. I understand unbelief's a problem in the body of Christ. <laughs> it's a problem because when the rubber meets the road and this thing boils down to the end, you're going to have two groups of folks, people that believe the gospel and people that didn't. That's all you're going to have. So you can yell but yourself all the way to the end. And you can make excuses to remain the same. And you can point fingers any way you want. But what did you do with the Jesus you heard? And why are you letting something else matter more? When he is the Lord. The Lord means to govern over. Supreme factor, ruler. And you're going to say, well, brother, you don't know what I'm going through. I'd be in a different place if it wasn't for this, this, and this. Man, I got good news for you. This, this, and this isn't the Lord. Why is it dictating your life? It's not the potter. So somewhere along the line, you got the misunderstood idea that the gospel is all about serving you instead of transforming you. <laughs> this isn't too harsh, is it? You're so quiet. Is it just because you're hearing and going... Man, I thought I was just coming to a service. You are. To get stirred up in love and good works. To live effective so people see the light in you and glorify Him. Let your light so shine before men, church. That's not some evangelistic duty. That's the joy of walking in love. Love is evangelistic. You're not even trying to impress anybody. You're absolutely impressed with the truth. And you understand why you're on the planet. Oh my goodness. And the questions are all answered through him. Because he's the way. Not a good idea. Oh, I'm preaching so good. <laughs> Be honest with me. Think how susceptible our hearts have been. I've learned this. I, I haven't been around forever, but I've been around long enough to learn this. Being right doesn't make it right. Sometimes you're so fixed on being right, it produces everything wrong. See, God didn't judge you and me in rightness. Because if he came and being, if God came being right, we're desperately wrong. He comes in righteousness. What that means, he sees you in a view in the face of weakness, imperfections, and failure, and he sees you through an eye that wants to make you right to fulfill what he knows you really are, what's possible, what's capable, what's potential. He judges us through his son in righteousness. There's a difference. You being wrong, he stands you in front of him and makes you right because he has a higher vision than what you've produced. And he knows more about who you are than you've ever known because he made you from the beginning. Yeah? So, so we get this idea that the cross, the cross is only here to expose our sin and our need for a savior. No, the whole design of the cross is to remove your sin and reveal you have a greater value and destiny than what you've been living. The cross says, I love you. You're more than you think. I've known you from the beginning. I'm honored to shed my blood for you because there's more to your life than you've understood. But I know who you are. Come to me. I'll give you light. Yeah? Come on! You tell me who pays a high price for nothing. We've been always taught that the cross and he had to die because we're sin, we're sin, we're sin, we sin, we're sinners. Yes, he had to die because we sinned. He didn't die because we're sinners, he died because something was lost. Your created value, your identity in him, your purpose, your destiny. Everything you're created to be was lost through sin. So God said, I'll tell you what. We'll cause Jesus, who's perfect and pure, to fulfill what man failed. And we'll make him sin on the cross. So people that put their faith in him have access to me and can be free from sin and step in to what they're created to be. 